Hi, my name's Andy, and this is a video about how to reuse code in Ant. Ant is a tool that is used for building Java programs. That means uh, making Java files, uh, which are a way of distributing Java programs, uh, just compiling things, zipping things up, copying files around, all the kinds of things you need to do uh, to actually make your um, your program ready to use uh, once you've written a program in Java. Um, if you're not using Ant, uh, this isn't really relevant to you. If you're thinking of starting a new Java project, uh, I would suggest seriously considering uh, using something other than Ant. But I know there are a lot of us like me who are using Ant um, uh, for better or worse. And uh, um, here are some things that I've learned about um, how to make your Ant files a little bit better, a little bit less painful. Um, you... Uh, uh, if you've read the manual and understood it, you would know all this stuff already. So um, um, this is for people who haven't. Okay, so what I'm going to look at first is uh, just a little bit about what is uh, what what is an ant build file, what's it made up of, um, because once I understood that stuff, all this stuff became a lot clearer to me. Um, and then I'm going to look at some ways of avoiding repeating code, of reusing code, uh, so you only have to write things once. Uh, I'm going to look at a little bit at the end about how possibly we could avoid repeating some other types of code, the dependency information, um, and then I'll be looking forward to your questions. So first of all, what is Ant? Well, Ant is actually two languages, or an Ant build file is two languages. Um, there's a declarative language which describes targets uh, and how they depend on each other, which means which one needs to be built before the other one can be built, or before the other one makes sense. And then inside each target, there's a procedural language, as in just a normal programming language that moves forward step by step, um, telling you what to do. So the first language, the uh, dependency language, is what's called declarative, which means um, you just declare what you uh, consider to be the case, and the computer will work out what to do about it. And what to do about it in this case will be to build some targets before other targets. Um, if make files mean anything to you, then this stuff at the bottom here might be helpful. Basically, it's exactly like a makefile. In a makefile, you have these two languages. You have the target colon and then some dependencies, and that's the declarative bit, which tells you what depends on what. And then uh, and all the lines under there with the tab at the beginning of them, those are the actions you should take um, when you're building that target. So um, makefiles are just the same, if that helps. OK, so what is the declarative language like? Well. The declarative language is the way that you define these things called targets um, and the ways they depend on each other. So here we've got a really simple um, snippet of a build file where there's a target called A that doesn't depend on anything and then B and D depend on A and C depends on B, which means that C indirectly depends on A. So you declare that this stuff uh, is true and then when you tell um, the system to build C, it knows it has to build A and then B and then C. So it does the working out, you just declare stuff. That's the declarative language. And then the procedural language, here we're looking at a target. Um, so the target is part of the declarative part, but the procedural language is the stuff inside. So you have this uh, Javac task, which uh, compiles code. Um, you have a copy task, which copies stuff. Uh, zip, which zips things up. JUnit, which runs your tests. So those Javac copy zip JUnit, those are called tasks. These are completely different from targets. So targets are things that have that you can ask for when you run ant. You can say ant and then the name of the target you want to build. Uh, and targets can have dependencies. Whereas tasks are just the stuff that live inside targets. And they're much simpler. They're basically just commands. Okay, so once we've got all that stuff clear, um, let's look at what we're trying to do here. What we're trying to do is to reuse some codes. And then, so I've got, I've got a very simple example here of some code we, want, we might want to reuse. Uh, we've got a target called A and a target called B, um, and both of them contain a Javac um, task. Let's imagine there are loads and loads of tasks, um, uh, but for the purposes of fitting this on the slide, we've just got one. And some of the things about that Javac task are different between the two targets. For example, the location of the source code and the destination directory. But some of those things are common. So the, the class path is the same in both these cases. And whether or not we're debugging is the same between them, and you often would want to switch that on and off. So just for the sake of argument, let's imagine that this stuff is too complicated um, 
for us to be able to handle it by just having an external properties file that somehow gives us different properties depending on what target we're building. So let's imagine there are lots of tasks or um, uh, complicated stuff that you want to be able to share between two targets. Um, and here the, the example is this uh, class path and debug information in a Java task. Okay, so here's the way that uh, we've been doing this in our project until very recently, until I realized there's a better way. Um, this is the this is the kind of brute force uh, way that I found. So there is this uh, ant task called ant call, which runs ant. So you're inside ant, you're already running ant, and it runs ant again. So the example, uh, following on from the same example that we've had, um, at the top we've got this target called compile, and in there we have the shared code. So the class path and debug information you can see there is only written once now. It's written in that top place, the compile target. And then the source de de and the destination de um, are got from properties. And in Ant, so the way you get a property, which is kind of like a variable, um, is you, you put the dollar and then the squiggly brackets and then its name. So somehow, once we get into that compile target, we need to have set those properties um, so that they can be used. And the way we do that is in target A, instead of having the Java act directly in target A like we used to, now we call ant call, uh, and we say our target is compile, and, uh, and we provide the parameters, which is how those properties get set. So what this does, well this, this works, okay, it does work. It, it runs ant again, and the target that it runs is the compile target, and before it, and while that ant, that mini ant is running, you've set these properties, source there and tester to what you want. And target B looks the same as target A, I just couldn't fit it on the slide, um, except there's different values for the parameters. So this does work. The question is, why is this wrong and evil? Well, here are the main points. Basically, um, as I said, it launches a completely new ant process. So um, that might immediately sound bad to you because um, you know launching a new process could be expensive or something like that. Um, it's particularly potentially bad with ant because what it does is it recalculates all the dependencies. So if you have a very large build file with lots and lots of things depending on lots of things, whenever you run ant call, which in our um, project was a lot before I got rid of all these, um, it would recalculate the dependencies, even if the target you're running doesn't have any dependencies. So there's no need for any calculation. Uh, ant will still calculate them. But even worse than that, if your target does have dependencies, those dependencies might have already been satisfied um, running in the main ant file, well, the ant won't care about that. It'll run them again. Uh, every time you ant call, you're in a completely new ant process. Uh, everything's completely separate from everything else. So uh, everything will get run again. Um, uh, uh, not only could that be a big waste of time, a huge waste of time, depending how slow some of those dependencies are, um, but also it, it could violate assumptions you've made that this thing will only run once or that, or that something will run, but it will only ever run before something else. So you might have a clean target in there that clean stuff that you're actually assuming will will be available and not deleted uh, by the time you get to it. So potentially you could have all kinds of horrific problems from this. Um, it also subverts another thing about Ant, which is like a, a basic assumption uh, when you're using Ant, which is that properties are completely immutable. So once you've set them, they stay like that forever. Now there is this, this the water has been muddied around this because there's this local task, which I won't talk about. Anyway, you can go and look up local. That was introduced in Ant 1.8. But anyway, in general, properties are considered immutable, and you should never expect the same property to have a different value at a different time. And what we're doing here is basically, by calling out into a completely separate Ant process, we are managing to have that property, that source der and dest der, set to different values uh, at different times, which is just kind of against what Ant's trying to do. And whenever you're doing something that's against the system you're in, you know, you've got to try and find another way because you're going to hit problems. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, uh, all this adds up to this, <coughs> this is evil. It used to be a necessary evil, um, but now in Ant 1.8 we can do better. So, what's another thing that we could do, and actually we could have been doing, um, before Ant 1.8? What we can do is write our own custom tasks. So remember, a task is just these commands that you can run inside a target. You can write your own tasks. So here I've written some Java, because you have to write your tasks in Java. Um, uh, this Java creates a class called mycompile, which extends task, which is the ant task 
object uh, class. Uh, so we're making our own task, and it has this uh, method on it called execute. And what it does is it sets the source to so the values of these um, properties, um, and it sets the uh, class path to this shared class path, and it sets the debugging flag. So there's the shared code there. That's set class path and set debug. Um, those are the pieces of shared code. Um, they're written. They're now written in Java instead of Ant. So in order to um, use this in our Ant file, we need to compile that class. So what I've done is I've put in a target at the top there called first, with a Java in there which compiles. Um, our task, which I've put in a directory called my compile, and once you've compiled it, you need a task def, which says there is a task called my compile. Um, it uses the Java class my compile with capitals, uh, and it gives a class pass for it. Once you have that task def, then the my compile task is now available. So if you look at target A, so long as it depends on first to make sure that my compile has been compiled and declared as this task def. Then you can run that task using the my compile uh, task, and we could have provided um, attributes here so that we didn't have to use global properties uh, inside. Um, but I didn't get around to doing that. So this works. We can share our code. Unfortunately, we've written a whole load of boilerplate. We've had to have this first target, and absolutely everything has to depend on that. Um, we've got a compile code before we can even run our real stuff in our AMP file. We've got to write Java, which isn't a lot of fun when we're um, we're supposed to be writing Ant. So I've called this her the horrific way. So finally, enough waiting. What is the right way? Well, the right way is MacroDef. It's this new thing in Ant 1.8 which finally does uh, what we want to do, which is create our own task but do it in Ant using Ant syntax. So you may say to me, well, this is obvious from the beginning, but yeah, I hadn't read the right bit of the manual and found this stuff, so hopefully this can... Uh, if you Google for code reusing Ant, you might find this video and it might help you. Okay, anyway. So what you do is you 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 write this macro dev task, you give it a name, which is going to be the name of your task. You specify some attributes, which are like arguments. So this thing is like a function. Don't think of it as a macro. I don't know why it's called macro dev. It's like a function. It takes these arguments, which it calls attributes, called source and desto, and then it has this sequential uh, tag, and the inside sequential is where you put your reused code, your, your body, body of your function, if you want to call it that. Um, so here we have the Java as before. The class path and debug information are shared, only written once. And the arguments for source and tester we access using this at squiggly bracket, and then the name squiggly bracket. Um, and this works exactly how you would hope it does. So now target A is just a call to my compile, and we provide source and desto as attributes, uh, and it works. So you can reuse code for tasks in Ant. It's not that horrific um, once you can live with the horrific XML syntax generally. It can be done, but only in Ant 1.8 can you use macro diff. Okay, so you may very well ask, well that's very, uh, that's fine that I can reuse, uh, tasks and that will get me quite a long way. Um, I can write my own tasks that are reusable. Um, but I also have dependency information that I'm copying and pasting all over my ant build file. Um, and I don't want to do that. I want to, um, uh, write code that is, uh, uh, not redundant, uh, I only write once. So, for example, you might have a build file where there's a target called Everyone Needs Me, and, and you know that every single other target in your build file must depend on that. Uh, how can you enforce that, or how can you express that in a way that means you don't have to repeat that depends equals depends equals? Uh, my answer for you today, and hopefully someone will tell me I'm wrong, but my answer for you is that I don't know how to do this. I think you just have to write it every time. And uh, it's, it's obvious that if you have a whole long list of targets that everyone should depend on, or lots of your targets should depend on, you can make one target that has that whole list of dependencies, and then the others can depend on that one target. Uh, so that's a kind of simple type of code reuse you can do with dependencies. But if you happen to know everyone, or a certain subset, needs to have this dependency, uh, I don't know a way of expressing that other than just typing it in as a dependency of every target in Ant, which is why you might consider other build tools. Um, I haven't tested this code, I haven't used Gradle in anger, 
But Gradle is based on a genuine programming language. It's a kind of a, a, a mini language that that's that has the, the Groovy language underneath it. Groovy is based on Java, so you won't be adding any new um, uh, requirements to your uh, build process apart from actually Groovy and Gradle themselves. Um, but this is a kind of made up Gradle file that I haven't tested that uh, I believe may be approximately equivalent to the thing I wrote on the previous slide. So you make a task called Everyone Needs Me, uh, and then you add this kind of event handling that when a task gets added, um, you modify that task immediately to say it depends on Everyone Needs Me. And then below, we just make task A, task B, task C, and task D, and that that when task added code runs and uh, and the dependency is automatically added. So I believe uh, you can do this kind of thing very conveniently in Gradle um, and I'm sure in lots of other build tools as well. And that's it. You can reuse some of your code in Ant. Do not despair. Do not give up on your build file and just think, oh, everyone hates it. Make it better. And in a video coming up, We'll be looking at how to test your build file by writing tests in Ant, and then you really genuinely can uh, enjoy writing your build file and not feel the paranoia and fear of living in an untested world. So, see you then.